Nice, Anna, I'm the director of the Human Rights Film Festival Berlin and today I'm talking to Luciana, the director of the wonderful film La Vocera, about a strong indigenous woman who tried to become president of Mexico. It's about her presidential campaign and all the struggles she's facing, but also about the courage this person in particular has and how she inspires others. Um, so my first question to Luciana, hi, by the way, it's a pleasure to <laughs> see you, um, is how did, did you met Marie Chu and where came the idea to uh, do this amazing and very powerful documentary? Well, in 2018, uh, um, they said, well, it started actually in 2017. They said that it was the first time in Mexico that they're going to launch um, for people uh, to be like represented, but uh, in in an autonomous way to run for for presidency. It was the first time in history. So we start hearing that the Zapatistas and the Indigenous Council, they were thinking on on launching a woman, an Indigenous woman, to run for presidency as uh, in an autonomous way. So we thought it was uh, like an historical thing. It was never uh, happened something like that in in the history, and especially because the Zapatistas and the Indigenous Council, they um, they always say they were not going to get involved into politics, that for them is like a dirty business. So it was very shocking to know that actually they were going to participate into this run. So um, w uh, the producer, Carolina Coppel, and me thought it was a an, an unique opportunity to um, to do this film. We didn't know it was going to be Mari Chui because they presented uh, a little bit further as you can see in the film, that's the first time we film when they uh, they say that it was going to be her. They just say first it's going to be an indigenous woman. So, uh, but first we, we we have to go to ask for permission with them because, of course, it was very interesting. It was it was very powerful, but we didn't know if we were going to have the access to it. So we were kind of nervous. So we ask. Uh, for, for an appointment, we went there, talked to them, and present the idea of making a film about it. They say, yes, you can film all the public uh, things that are gonna happen, there's no problem, everybody can film that, but you know, the private things we will see, we don't know. <laughs> and of course, we know that uh, being a documentary filmmaker, that kind of thing happens, so we say yes, uh, thank you very much, and we knew that we have to win you know, the opportunity to be uh, a little bit like like closer to her and to all the surroundings. So that's how the the project started. Also always a bit about gaining trust, isn't it? And if you don't know whom you're going to accompany, it's hard to build it up beforehand. Um, probably you could give us a bit of contextualization um, because I don't know if everybody here in Germany knows who the Zapatistas are and how they are interconnected or why they join forces with the indigenous committee. Sure. You know, in, in 1994 in Mexico, uh, the 1st of January, uh, everybody opened the newspapers and saw that in, that in Chiapas, uh, an indigenous group was was rising against the government. It was very important because it was the uh, first day that the Mexico-USA treaty uh, started. So it was a very symbolic day, and 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 suddenly we realized that uh, that Chiapas was in war against the government. A lot of of indigenous people with uh, with arms were taking the um, 
like the National Palace in San Cristobal de las Casas, which is a small town there, but it's very symbolic and it's very important. So the story is that actually the, uh, the Zapatista army, because it is an army, uh, they were preparing itself in Chiapas for a long time. Uh, their leader, uh, Subcomandante Marcos, now called Subcomandante Galeano, knew uh, what was happening in Chiapas. It was a, a lot of uh, unfair situations. But since the, uh, the beginning of the, con uh, of the Spanish conquest, it was always been like that. But really, the situation of poverty and lack of opportunities, and they be taking the land from the indigenous people, of course, not only in Chiapas, all over, all over Mexico, but in Chiapas was like especially unfair and poor. There was a lot of health issues. It was really, really bad situation. So they decided to, to organize this, uh, this army to rise against the government because of all the unfair situations they were living. But, uh, but especially because they know that uh, with, the, with this treaty, the situation was going to be much worse. So uh, it was just like, this is enough. We have to do something. So they rise. At, at the beginning, the army came. There was like a big fight. And then they tried to make an agreement. Uh, in which there was some things that the Zapatistas were asking and like they want their land back, they want to be autonomous. Uh, and uh, so actually the government say yes. In, in the beginning, there was this kind of agreement. The government didn't uh, follow this agreement, of course, but the Zapatistas communities were built and that was very important because there were autonomous communities where they have their, their own schools, their own land, their own health. And it was a very big symbol for everybody. You know, I think not only in Mexico, but all over the world, it was like a, a little bit like the Che Guevara figure, you know, uh, Subcomandante Marcos and the Zapatistas and people fighting for freedom. It's like this very big symbol that this is possible. Then, after this agreement didn't actually happen, uh, what they started organizing was the, the indigenous uh, Congress that it was had these representations, but different groups. There, there's a lot of indigenous groups in Mexico. So the idea was that uh, every indigenous group have its representation in this kind of Congress or assembly that that was very important for them. That was like two years later that the rise. Um, and that's where actually Marichui appears in the story because she was already involved, as she says, uh, tells in the, in the film. So there's been a very uh, big organization since the rise of the Zapatistas and with this uh, Indigenous Congress that is different, but they are they are involved. I mean, they they talk to each other. They uh, they have to do one with it uh, with, it, with it, each other. So um, if if it wasn't because of the Zapatistas, there would not be an an Indigenous Council. That's the so for like twenty years and more, they actually try to do things and to um, uh, organize and make uh, things against all these um, projects and injustice for, for a long period of time. But there was a time that they said, you know, if we don't do like something like different this time, we're going to disappear because things are getting worse and worse. They're, they're fighting against us all the time, so we need to do something that that really shakes the country. So that's why actually they decide to launch Marichui to the presidency. Not because they want to win. That's I think that's very important. They they didn't want to win actually in the end, but they want that everybody look at uh, the indigenous uh, like 
like presence again. And of course, she was in all the media and, and a lot of interviews, and they were talking again about the indigenous proposals. So their, their plan to make indigenous issues more visible worked through the campaign. How do you think, uh, besides making it more visible, did also the perception in the general public in Mexico, in the general public, but also on the political level, uh, change through this campaign? Well, I have to say, not really, uh, because it's a very racist country. It's a, it's a very male-dominated country. Uh, so I think that at first they didn't take it like seriously because, well, she was a woman, she was an indigenous, of course. But I think the little by little people start seeing that, of course, there were other problems, there were other issues, and even if, if they want to look aside, they exist. So changes don't happen from one week to the other. Uh, people don't change their minds, but actually they start seeing that there were lots of things happening that they didn't know. Uh, like all over the country, there was not only injustice and and problems, but there were um, organizations, you know, and, and collectives and women making things. And so it was there's there's something happening here. And I think it's just more like 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 the beginning of this new movement, you know, it's going to take time. But um, I think that it changed people's mind that, you know, maybe it's possible that there's other ways of making politics. It's not only the parties. Of course, not all the population thinks that, but I think it opens our minds say, well, maybe it doesn't have to be one president. Maybe it could be an assembly as a as the indigenous uh, people work. It doesn't work for uh, for everybody, of course, you know? It will just have to open minds little by little because it's, it's like a big idea and it's very different. I had also the feeling that by uh, trying to get this uh, essential signatures to be able to run as uh, for the presidency, it was also an act of um, self-empowerment, showing that everyone has a vote and that they can change something. I, I don't. I didn't have the feeling that this feeling of having a voice in the country uh, was was that big within the indigenous community before that. Was, is that an accurate um, feeling that I got from your film? That it also like empowered the, the individuals? Yes, yes, I think so, especially the women. I think it was a campaign that uh, gave a lot of power to women to say, you know, it's very important that women raise their voice and that they represent their communities as well. You see, we have a woman here so that means that women can actually be part not only in the general politics but inside their communities because the change came to the to the indigenous community as well it was a big change for them because they they were not used to that they were all the like the men who talk and make the things but now things are changing so the message was first for the indigenous communities you know say we have to change we all have to change and the signature, of course, it came from the government. It was it was not like something they did want to do. They had to do it as the other candidates had to do it. But I think what it it was very important that it made people to organize in their communities. You know that we have to do something. We need to change, but we need to to organize first to sign and to make her there, but to solve our problems because because nobody's going to solve them. So as she says a lot, what happened in, in this campaign is that we create organization. We create this idea of autonomy. Not that we were going to win, but actually it makes this big organization again 
we make contacts now we're 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 stronger as a group and that's gonna make like a lot of changes in the future as well because now they're much more connected they know each other much uh, much better there there's much more indigenous groups in the indigenous council so i think it was like as you say uh, an empowerment uh, issue for them uh, and of course for the public and what is very is very funny now that you know in the film you can see that the media they don't treat her very well they she's very condescending and now that they're making a lot of like interviews for the film she's like a star and she's like a hero and you know that difference shocks me so much it's like now you treat her like you know but it should please we need to talk to you and she's like a star now i mean i don't know if is it if it because of the film or because it's it, actually she showed that she was actually real and that she was uh, much more like serious that the other people, but now she's really, everybody wants to talk to her, everybody wants to interview her. And it is, it's something very strange because before these like, what are you, why do you want to be president? You are just a woman, you, you know? So but it's, it's At the same time, it must be also very beautiful to see the impact of your film. That was going to be uh, my next question. How is, or how was the perception of your film in Mexico? Because if we look here, it's like a window that you open for us to um, news that we hardly hear. But how is it different in Mexico? Well, what it was pretty shocking for me is that people that they don't exactly, uh, they're not very close to this kind of uh, fights or they are not interested or they don't agree with it. There's something that lights uh, their heads. It's like, well, I think that I understood like something. I know why they're fighting for it. I know why this is unfair. And I think that's very important. People that are very, because of course the, the people like us that are supporting the Zapatistas and that we know that's the, uh, we agree on that, it's very easy that they like the film. But there's been all kinds of people, very different audience that actually uh, seen the film and they understood things that they didn't before. And I like that they make some kind of conscious, especially about, about the indigenous communities and about progress. What is progress? Is actually progress making us good? For whom is progress? On behalf of, of of whom is progress? If and if progress is actually destroying us, is that progress or or not? So all the discussion that is very important now, not only for Mexico, I think for the planet itself, all the things uh, in the middle of this pandemic thing, because the film appeared in the middle of the pandemic, and I think that was very important as well. It make people a little bit, of course. It's always very small, but to think about it, say we we need to save the planet and the indigenous groups, that's what they're doing. They know about it and that's what they're doing. So uh, I'm kind of shocked and glad about that uh, this is happening, that people that are not actually agree very much, or uh, they're more like right wing or they, they start thinking in a different way, and that's kind of nice. That sounds like the impact you would wish for for such a film. I hope that our audience in Berlin also learns uh, and gets a different perspective of how politics, but also how um, agriculture structures, societal structures, uh, could work. I think uh, we see some amazing role models in there uh, next to Marichu, but in particular her. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talking with us. We are really looking forward to showing your film in the cinemas, but also offering it online to everybody else in Germany. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I wish you personally best of luck. And I hope that many, many people worldwide see this very important film. 
Thank you very much. I just want to say very, very quickly that actually the Zapatistas are in Europe now. They touring Europe uh, to talk to people, to make a dialogue, and that I think is very interesting. I think they're going to come to Germany eventually. They're touring now in France, Spain, and they they're talking about, uh, with different collectives. They're making this big tour to uh, to know people, to talk with them, not to it's not like. It's not a clash, it's a dialogue, and I think that's very interesting. That's well. super good to know. We will link, uh, if we find the information in the video, uh, the information on the tour of the Zapatistas, because I think it's really interesting to join the conversation with them. Thank you so much for this hint. That's, that's amazing. Uh, it was lovely talking to you, and I hope to see our audience in the cinemas. Okay.